Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at the solution to the code forces problem shuffle which is problem B of code forces educational round 89 division 2. So in this problem we are given that we have n integers a1 to an and one of those integers at index x is 1 all the other elements are 0. Now we are given m operations we can perform m operations in each operation we are given a range l and r and between those uh, bit, all the elements is between those in those range from L to R we can swap. So if the range is given from L to R any two elements in that range we can swap. Now we want to find the number of indices k such that it is possible to make that index as 1 in one operation. So what does that mean? So let's look at one example. So this is given 4, 1, 2, 2, 4 and 1, 2. So this is a test case. Now 4 is the number of integers. 1 is the index which will be 1 initially and 2 are the number of operations which are 2 and 4, 1 comma 2. So in each in each uh, operation meaning in each operation we are given a range. So in each operation we are given a range L1 comma R1. So in each operation we are given a range L1 comma R1. So here the range is 2 to 4, here the range is 1 to 2. So according to this condition what will our array look like initially? So it says that the 1 meaning that the first index is 1 all other are 0. So it will be something like this 1 0 0 0 correct. So we have 4 integers all the all other integers are 0 except for the first index which is 1. Now it says that 2 to 4 we can swap any 2 elements. So 2 to 4 will be this range right. So we can swap any 2 index in this range but even if we swap anything we cannot make anything as 1 so we have nothing to gain from 2 to 4. Now look at let's look at 1 to 2. So 1 to 2 has is this range. So in 1 to 2 if I swap this with this so I can make the second index as 1. So I can make 2 index as 1 so the answer will be 2 which is given in this test case. So in 2 to 4 we could not make anything as 1 but in 1 to 2 I could make uh, everything as 1 or suppose it was something like 1 to 3. So suppose 2 to 4 was given and uh, this was 1 to 3. So 2 to 4 again this is 2, 3. 4. Nothing uh, in, two to, in 2 to 4, even if we swap any 2 elements, we cannot make anything as 1, right? But if 1 to 3 is given, so 1 to 3 is like this, so every element in 1 to 3 I can make as 1. How? So this is 1 to 3 and we have already 1 in it, in 1 to 3. So if I swap this one with this index, I can make this as 1. If I swap this with this, I can make this as 1. So all the indexes, indices in 1 to 3 I can make as 1. So in 2 to 4 I cannot make anything as 1, in 1 to 3 I can make everything as 1. So why is that? So we have a range. So we have a range where every element is 1. So that range initially is x comma x. So x here is given as 1. So initially we have a range x comma x where every element is 1. Right. Because x is already 1, so that range initially is x comma x. So that range we have as 1 comma 1, right? So now we come across the range given to us as 2 comma 4. So we check does 2 comma 4, the range given to us, intersect with the range with all 1s. Let's uh, denote that by L comma R. So L comma R is the range with all 1s and l comma r is x comma x initially right because uh, at x element at, at x index position we have 1. So l to r is the range which has all 1s in it and l to r is x comma x initially. So we come across 2 to 4 in our problem. So does 2 to 4 intersect with the range with all 1s meaning that does 2 to 4 intersect with l to r. So we have l to r. So does 2 to 4 intersect with L to R and L to R is 1 comma 1. No it doesn't. You can see that 2 to 4 and 1 to 1 have no intersection. So if it doesn't intersect, so if it doesn't intersect, we cannot make anything 1. Anything as 1. So 2 to 4 does not intersect with 1 comma 1. So I come across 2 to 4. 2 to 4 does not intersect with 1 comma 1. So I cannot make anything as 1. Now I come across, let's uh, take this as 1 comma 2 only as it was in the test case. Now we come across 1 comma 2. So again we check does 1 comma 2 intersect with L comma R which is still 1 comma 1. So yes 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2 intersect. So what we what that means is that we can make 
all one in our one comma two range, right? And how is that? I'll just uh, explain with another example uh, shortly. So suppose I have uh, something like this, zero one zero 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 zero, right? So initially the range is two comma two, right? Now suppose the range given to me is one comma three, meaning that one two three. So one two three intersects with two comma two, so I can make everything here as one. So this can be one, this can be one. Now uh, so two comma two initially we have now we were given one two three and we saw that one two three one two three intersects with two 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 and so one two three we can make all as one. Now suppose I'm given three to four. So one so initially l was l and r was two to two. So initially we had this as one. We were given the range. This is uh, initially. This one this is not a test case. This is initially. So initially two to two meaning that that index x x was two we have one. So between one to three, it intersects with two comma two. So we can make all as one. Now three to four, three to four will be something like this. Now three to four intersects with the previous range which has all one. So we can make three to four all one as well. So that is how it's working. We are updating the range where every element is one. So we can make all. So coming back to the question, uh. So coming back to the question, two to four, we saw that two to four does not intersect with l comma r, so we cannot make anything as one. Now we check does one comma two intersect with l comma r? Yes. So we can make all one in one comma two. Now update l comma r. So how do we update l comma r? So I had one comma two, or let's say l one comma r one was given in the problem. So l one comma r one was given in the problem. So this is uh, is given. And l comma r is the range we're maintaining with all ones. So l comma r is the range with all ones. Now, so like I said, if l one comma r one does not intersect with l comma r, so we cannot make anything as one. But if l one r one intersects with l comma r, then we can make everything in l one comma r one to one. So our range with all ones will will expand. And that will be the union of l1 comma r1 and l2 comma r2. So now lr becomes now lr becomes union of l1 comma r1 and l2 comma r2. So l will become basically minimum of l1 comma l and r will become maximum of l2 comma r. So and then we can check again. But here after two to four one to two. Uh, we uh, we don't have any more operations. We don't have any more ranges given to us. So now we just find the total number of elements between L to R because, like I said, L to R is the range with all ones. So we can make all ones. So the answer will be R minus L plus one. So let's take another example. So suppose that the uh, uh, number of elements given to us is two, and the index with one initially is two, and we're given say three operation. Okay. So our array will look something like this, and we do not actually need to maintain an array. Uh, I'm just uh, showing the array for an example. We don't want to do anything with the array. So the array, but the array will look something like this. So the array will so look something like this. We have five elements. Second one is one. All the other are zero. Now suppose I get the range four to five, and initially L to R will be x comma x. So L to R is two comma two, right? So four to five, two to two, do do not intersect. So continue for so continue this uh, operation. Nothing to do. Now I get one two three, and so one two three intersects with l comma r, which is two to two. So we update our l comma r. So l becomes one, r becomes three. So l comma r becomes one comma three. Now suppose I'm given in the problem three to five. These are the test cases, so I mark I'll mark the test cases as something like this. Now three to five is given. Now I check three to five. Does it intersect with one comma three? So yes, three to five and one where one where one comma three is our L two R. Now yes, one three to five intersects with one comma three. So we update our range with all ones, which is L two R. So now L becomes one, R becomes five. So L two R becomes one comma five. Now. Again, if another operation is given, we can check whether it intersects with this or not. If it intersects, then again we'll expand our LNR. If it doesn't, then we can continue. 
and if we don't have any more uh, ranges given to us then we can just tell the answer which is r minus l plus 1 so this is how it's working and so now let's look at the code so this is the code that i have so like i said initially i have n x and m and uh, these two lines don't have any meaning i was just trying something else so like i said l is x initially and r is x initially so i take in the range p to q in, instead of l1 r1 here i have taken p to q so i have l as x r as x initially so i take in the uh, uh, range as p to q now this is the condition where it doesn't intersect meaning that when will it doesn't intersect so suppose i have uh, l comma r and suppose i have p comma q so when will l comma r and p comma q not intersect this will not intersect if p is less than l meaning that it will be something like this uh, if q is less than l actually so yeah if q is less than l so if q is less than l or if r is greater than r is if q is less than l or if r is less than p then in this case uh, they do not intersect and what are these cases i'll just say if uh, q is less than l then it will be something like this p and q and then after a while we have a range l to r so they do not intersect the other case is l to r is there and then we have p to q so you can say that r is less than p meaning that there is one gap they don't intersect or q is less than l meaning that there is a gap they don't intersect so this is the case where they don't intersect okay so in this test case if they don't intersect nothing to do continue if they do intersect update our lnr which is like i said simply l will become minimum of l and p r will become maximum of r and q and then simply in the end we can print our answer which will be r minus l plus one so finally answer will be all the elements in l2r which will be r minus l plus one so again what we did in uh, in a nutshell was we maintained we maintained a range l2r which we can make all one R right and if we get a range if a range intersects then we update if it doesn't then we continue and finally the final range in that all the elements we can turn into one so that's the approach so if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section and i'll give a link to my code in description so that's all thank you